Hallo meine lieben Freunde, was geht, was geht, was ist los, guten Abend, guten Tag, es ist dein lieben YouTuber James Bay und ich höre heute auf The Untold Story of German America, um, Deutsch Americana. Now, I uh, don't know what's going on with my sound equipment guys, but apparently every time I record a video there's like cackling or something. I don't know how I can fix that, I might need to use a different recording software, but I'm just letting you guys know, there's probably going to be cackling in this video too, because my MacBook has just been losing every battle bro, losing every battle. Anyways, if you guys are new to the channel, welcome to you guys returning viewers, welcome back. We post videos every single day. All I ask is that you guys abonniert or subscribe to this channel. Um, and like the video bits. Like, take some time right now. I'm gonna give y'all some time. Just like that video, like, like the, the video, hit that like button real quick because um, that's what we <laughs> I have not been pushing too much on the channel, and it's been it's been affecting your boy. I ain't gonna lie, you know what I'm saying? Take your finger, like the video before you get started. Because bro. What we're going to be reacting to today is the untold history of German America. I didn't even realize America had German roots like that. I thought we had UK roots and that was it. Das war alles. You know what I'm saying? But I guess that wasn't the case. So we're about to dive nose deep into this thing and see exactly what the hell they're talking about. As we love to say, Los Kids. Influential countries. An Anglo nation with an English-based culture and British heritage. Or is it? Most Americans today speak English as their first language, and their culture is fairly homogenous throughout the country when- Very true, very, very true. This guy is a legend. His name is Masaman. Make sure you guys subscribe to him, by the way. I'm gonna put the link in the description. Compared to other large nations, but it's no secret that Americans have a plethora of origins from outside the British Isles. But it would surprise many to learn that, according to the census data released by the United States government on ethnic self-identification, the largest heritage in the country would actually be from the nation of Germany. What? That's, bro, I didn't understand. Like, what? How? How is that possible? So the largest heritage for a lot of the people in America comes from Germany, bro? How? I, I need to know this. Not England, which is the basis of this video. Yeah, I was gonna say, how is it not England? Like, what? <laughs> did I miss something? I guess I did. Y'all, <laughs> Maps are usually a pretty good way to picture these sorts of things, and thankfully there are a litany of maps on the ethnic origins of the people of the United States, and as you can see in all of them, Germans seemingly dominate in terms of area they take up, yeah, looks like it. I did not know that that was a real thing. America's background has strong German roots? What? <laughs> what? Come again? The real situation is much more complicated and interesting than these maps would suggest because not only are most of these areas themselves extremely ethnically heterogeneous, but unlike Europe and most of the rest of the world, there are only a minority of people in the United States that are entirely of one ethnicity, with most Americans being able to trace ancestry to many different nations. True, we're a melting pot, man. Everybody was fucking everybody. That's literally what it is, bro. <laughs> Because of these nuances, there's still debate as to whether the largest ancestral chunk of the U.S. comes from Germany or England. And in the last U.S. census, around 46 million people declared full or partial German ancestry. Bro, I cannot tell you how common it is for people to say, oh, I'm uh, like 9% German. <laughs> like, people do that all the time. I mean, you t ask any Caucasian person, my guy, they'll be like, yeah, I'm German. And I'm like, really? Like, yeah, like... My ancestors are from Germany. <laughs> like, damn, Ancestry.com either has a glitch in the matrix or that's a real thing. That's probably a real thing. That's crazy, man. I did not, not know that. I'm not gonna lie, man. Them Darno looking kind of annoying. <laughs> With an additional two million, when including other German-speaking peoples such as Austrians or Swiss, accounting for about 15% of America's population, and in the same census, only 26 million people claimed English ancestry, which was only eight percent. To be honest, would you really want to claim English ancestry? I mean, it would be a bit weird, isn't it? You need a bottle of water. <laughs> of the population. However, since 1990, the United States Census has allowed its citizens to identify ethnically as American, and we're not talking about natives here. 
This is a very complex topic, so I'll save it for a future video, but the majority of those that identify as American rather than a European... Wow. Map of those who identify solely as American. It makes sense, bruh. Where the darker red is, this is pretty much where I'm located. The northern part of Florida and all the little southern states, man. I should have freaking known, bro. The southeastern United States is a... It's like a... like the. The, 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 the butt crack of America. I ain't gonna lie. It's like the butt crack of America, G. Um, you meet a lot of the most interesting people in this area. And I don't mean that in the best way possible. You see, if you ever travel down here, you'll see why. <laughs> An ethnic group are overwhelmingly of British stock, and they numbered around 21 million people, which would bring up the total number of Americans with English ancestry to almost equal with the Germans, and indeed before the 1990 census, when American was given as an option for ethnicity, those that self-identified as English were the largest group in the United States. Jesus Christ, I mean, I can, I, that makes sense. So if you look at the history, bro. Um, a lot of people are like, well, low key, we kind of did descend from English people, right? Right? I mean, and then when it came to the whole like slave trade thing, da 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 da, wasn't the English people fucking the uh, the like you know the slaves and stuff like that too? So technically, <laughs> so in all it is a bit weird, isn't it? <laughs> there are more Americans with at least some English ancestry. There are more people of pure German ancestry than pure English ancestry. Wow, I did not know that. How, though? He, I don't think he's gotten to how. Like, I need to know the how is that possible. How did this come to be the case? Oh, true. Even though the United States was founded by Englishmen and they did dominate early on in the country, they did allow immigration from other regions of Europe, with there being a moderate wave of Germans entering the colonies in the late 1600s. Most what? Wait a minute. Pause. Germans migrated to America in the 1600s? That is something I did not know about at all. Matter of fact, the fact that we had any other... Uh, you know, country migrate over to America in the 1600s, 1700s is like it blows my mind because what I was taught is the only people besides the English people that got brought to America were brought to America by force, you know what I'm saying? And it was dark skinned like your boy, so this is very interesting. What? settling in the state of Pennsylvania, which had the first major German settlement in North America, that being Germantown in Philadelphia. One of the most famous cases of a large group of Germans settling in America were the Hessian soldiers recruited from the Landgrafschaft of Hesse Kassel in the Holy Roman Empire, what? and they fought for the British during the American Revolutionary War until their defeat by George Washington after his crossing of the Delaware River, what? and at least 3,000 of the captured Hessians ended up settling in Pennsylvania. What? Oh my God, so 3,000 of the captured Hessian, that's a lot of that's a lot of German, bro. That is a lot of German, especially for that time. That's a lot of Germans, my guy. That's By the year 1790, which was the first census year for the United States since independence, Germans made up around seven percent of the population of the states and up to one third of the state of Pennsylvania. And many villages and towns in western Pennsylvania retained their German heritage by teaching the German language to their youth and building Lutheran churches. Now, you also have oh, the Pennsylvania what? Dutch, a subgroup of German Americans in eastern Pennsylvania, and their exonym is a bit of a misnomer, saying how they're not actually descended from the Dutch at all, but from German immigrants from Rhineland Palatine who formed their own what? identity north of Philadelphia. That is insane, bro. I did. I'm, my mind is blown because the fa I, I didn't know this at all, bro. How did I not learn this in school? They did not teach this in school at all like what region known as pennsylvania dutch country or die another notable german group in pennsylvania would be the amish and although many amish might identify as pennsylvania dutch and vice versa the two terms are not interchangeable with the amish having a very distinct religious practice along with other cultural traditions such as the rejection of mainstream technology true man the amish community man that's a community that has been made fun of for Decades, my guy. Decades. Like, do you know what an iPhone is? They're like, a what? <laughs> what does you mean an iPhone? You know about this horse, though? You know about turning that damn hay, though? <laughs> like, oh, man. Am Amish communities, bro. It's cool. Some of the nicest people ever.
in isolation from America. Oh, story time though. I did get to see, I think it's like once a year or something. I forgot what they call it, but um, they're able to go out and actually visit like a major city and stuff and get a culture shock. Bro, I saw a bunch of Amish people go to Chicago, change their damn life. Like I, I could tell the looks on their faces. They were just like, oh, we're not in our little village anymore, are we? <laughs> what is this music? <laughs> what are these clothes and what is this technology? And why are the buildings so tall? Like it was, it was crazy, man. Imagine like living your whole life in a super small town, like using no technology, and then moving from that to a big city. That would be life-changing. Culture, which is where you'll find some of the last remaining monolingual German speakers in the United States. The Amish are essentially a snapshot of 19th century German-American society. I mean, look at that hair, man. Y'all can't even lie, right? Like, that's, that's the bull cut. That's, that's the legendary bull cut, man. How they have the highest birth rate of nearly any group in the country. I saw it. <laughs> of course, bruh. Literally, all they can do is literally clap cheeks. That's it. They can work hard and clap cheeks. When you got no technology, especially technology, like, you know, you're like, man, I'm not trying to get nobody pregnant. And you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to, I'm trying to live my life and I still want to pleasure myself. So, you know, obviously you got the internet there, you know, we got websites, take care of whatever you need to take care of, but you can't do that. So my man's over here probably got 11 kids that are not in the photo. <laughs> like, I just what happens, bro? That's crazy. I, idle hands is something else, my guy. Seven children per woman, which is on seven top. children per woman. What? Can you imagine having seven kids? Can you imagine having seven? NBA young boy has like nine, I think, probably ten. But can you imagine having seven kids? The African country of Niger and are the only group in the United States that are exempt from social security tax seeing how their traditional family roles call for taking care of their own elderly True. now I really like this map of American ancestry because it shows how connected most Americans are with many Pennsylvanians migrating west to the Midwest during the period of American expansionism as more Americans moved west from the original colonies, they were joined later on by immigrants from Europe, and the largest phase of German migration to America also occurred during this time, with migration skyrocketing after the 1840s. Most that would make, that makes sense. That actually kind of does make sense. I can see people migrating in the 1800s, I guess, but the 16s and 17s, that's mad early, bro. Like, they really migrate, like, why? <laughs> I'm just like, but why? I mean, I guess it did explain in the beginning why for the most part. But still, I'm, I'm still kind of confused. Like, how? <laughs> Settling in the Midwest states west of Pennsylvania, such as Ohio, Michigan, Illinois, and Wisconsin. And they mostly either founded their own towns or integrated with already existing German settlements. Mm. German immigrants and American-born Germans were also joined by Austrian immigrants from the Austrian Empire who settled in pretty much the same area, as well as the Swiss who mostly went to Utah. And when comparing the climates of Utah and Switzerland- Yeah, bro, hey, that makes sense, yo. All my Swiss subscribers, where y'all at? <laughs> That's crazy, chilling up in the mountains. Now, our mountains aren't as, uh, you, you know, big or wonderful or whatever, but we, we got a little something, something out here. Yeah, we got a little something, something out here. We got a nice little landscape. That makes sense that they would like kind of move over to a, a, a similar climate. It's pretty beautiful in, uh, in Utah, man. It actually makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. In the 1800s, ethnic Germans might or might not have assimilated with Anglo-American settlements in the same region, with many opting instead to integrate with other Germanic groups, especially the Dutch, Norwegians, and other Scandinavians. During mm -hmm. this period, German culture and language was abound around the Great Lakes region, with German being the largest minority language in the country for over a hundred years. What, bro? Are you serious, my guy? That's insane. I like that's another thing too. German being the most like popular language for a while. Like that is like in America of all places. Like what? <laughs> what happened? <laughs>
spreading out even further to the Plains region to the west, especially the Dakotas, Nebraska, and Iowa. However, after the start- Oh, those are all states that no one really thinks about here, though. I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense. Of World War I in 1970, German culture and language was highly oppressed in all areas of the country, with many oh. German Americans being accused of treason or spying for simply speaking German and- Oh, dang, man. And a lot of that, too, got amplified in those movies, bro. If you look at the movies from back in the day, like, I'd say, like, 99%, or I'd say 90% at least, of any movie that had, like, a German in it, bro, it was like, oh, you're connected to the regime or something like that. And I'm just like, bro, like, crazy, crazy. And then, it obviously, it, I could imagine it would make people uh, who are actually German in America, like, their lives hard as hell. When 9-11 happened... A lot of uh, Muslim people living in America had it bad, bro. Had it absolutely bad. People were being um, super just nasty to anybody that looked Arabic or Muslim. Like, it was just super crazy, man. Um, and it's the simple mind of America. The simple mind of America. Um, if it fits the narrative and you can justify being ha um, having hatred towards a demographic, that's what people will do. It's sad, man, but it's true. Bars. Like, this caused the sharp decline in immigration from Germany and the movement to phase out the teaching of German in all public schools in the Midwest, with the area instead becoming one of the hubs of mainstream American culture, which is why the Midwest today is seen by many as representing the average American or middle America. Ah, uh, wow. I did not know that. I mean, this is probably the most American looking scene I've ever seen right here. Like, look at this. That's so that's so American, bro. The process of learning English and adopting American cultural values is known as Americanization. And aside from a handful of communities in the Plains region and Deutsche Rai, pretty much all German traditions and culture disappeared. Don't speak the enemy's language. Speak American. Speak American. I forgot how dumb we were, dog. Like, America, oh God. Jesus. German culture in America took an even further hit after World War II, and by this time, almost all of the German settlements in the Midwest and the Great Plains had been fully Americanized. However, their heritage has been acknowledged and passed down throughout the generations, even if most German surnames have been Anglicanized, such as Eisenhower, Schmidt, Gutmann, Fischer, and many uh. others. Schmidt is Smith. That is crazy. I didn't realize that. What? Go back. There's another name, too. Uh, hold on. Eisenhower is Eisenhower. What? Goodman, Fisher, and many others. Gutmann is Goodman. What? I didn't. What? Plot twist? Those are German names, huh? That's kind of crazy. What? Bro, Americanization's high-key poison, bro. That's crazy. Today, there are no U.S. states that have any ethnic majority, meaning that in every single state, no group makes up over 50%. And this is true for Germans as well, though some states do come pretty close, such as North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, and Wisconsin, where Germans make up over 40% of the population, which... Whoa, I did not know that at all. At all. Well, these are like... Some of the strangest places to have a huge German population, too. I mean, I, I would think that a lot of people love to move to Florida or New York or, Cal like, you know, coastal states and stuff. But I guess that's cool. Some of the most ethnically homogenous states in all of America, although they themselves are still extremely ethnically diverse when compared to any European country. True. When mapping out the largest European ethnicity by state, it's easy to see just how much Germans dominate in the north and west of the country, with there being 23 states with the German plurality, 17 that are English, almost all in the south and in New England. Well, makes sense, man. Oh, God. I do not like the South, bro. I don't like the South. <laughs> like, I do not like it. It's just, it's exactly what I expected, man. I don't like it, bro. Three are Irish, all in the Northeast. Three are Italian, the three states around the New York City metropolitan area. Three are Spanish, all in the Southwest. Mm -hmm. And one is French, that being Louisiana. The German concentration in the United States is fairly contiguous, except for two main exceptions. That being Central Texas and Southern Florida. Southern Florida. 
that makes sense. We there's actually a, a huge Balkan presence, by the way, um, kind of up in the Midwest as well. Highest concentration spanning the northern half of the country in an area known as the German Belt, stretching from Pennsylvania all the way to California. Damn. And the area of lowest concentration would be in the Deep South, with the state with the lowest percentage of Germans being Mississippi. Well, yeah, Mississippi got something else out there, bro. They. Mississippi is Mississippi. It's not really a place I would travel to on vacation, to be honest. Germans had been moving to Texas since before Texas was even a part of the U.S. or had declared independence from Mexico, with it also being of note that Germans also settled in areas of modern northern Mexico, and today Germans in central Texas have their own unique culture forged from its proximity to Mexico and the southern United States. Oh, that's actually cool, bro. What? <laughs> I did not know that. What the fuck? It's, it's also important to note that because of the proximity and high degree of integration between Canada and the United States, the North American German Belt doesn't terminate at the 49th parallel that divides the two countries, with Germans being the largest ethnic group in the province of Saskatchewan, as well as many other areas of the Canadian prairies such as Alberta and Manitoba. The German-Canadian community is much smaller than the American one and has a much less extensive history with most Germans in the prairie regions coming from the Russian Empire directly before World War I or from American immigrants of German descent from the Midwest and Plains region, seeing how the border was far more porous during the Pioneer Era. The German Belt today is an extremely diverse region of North America, having minorities of ethnic Scandinavians, English, many Slavic groups, along True. with countless Native American tribes. And although the region today is undoubtedly the whitest area in the country, <laughs> facts. it also has the largest proportion of Native Americans in the continental U.S. The the German Belt actually spans an area of 1.5 million square miles, Jesus. 11 times larger than the country of Germany itself. Wow. Oh, my God. So we might have more Germans in America than we do out there in Germany. Gee, that's crazy, bro. The German population of North America is about two-thirds the size of the German population of Europe. Oh, never mind. I take that back. <laughs> As mentioned earlier, an indeterminate proportion of self-identified German Americans whose families have been in the country for generations may have ancestry from many other groups such as English, Irish, Swedish, or even Native Americans because of the relatively large numbers of natives that lived around. Oh, most Germans have had deep interest and admiration of Native American society since the 1800s, which also makes sense too. That's cool. German settlements during the pioneer era. Here's an unofficial flag for German Americans that I designed myself since my father's father is of Pennsylvania Dutch descent. I replaced the red and white stripes with the modern colors of the German flag, along with adding the insignia for the German coat of arms with the 23 stars representing the 23 states where Germans are the largest European ethnic group. Although German culture and language is no longer very relevant in mainstream American society, the heritage and spirit of those original German pioneers still lives on in many Americans to this day. And whether their ancestors were farmers, miners, or even soldiers that initially came to this country to fight against us, their legacy and impact on American identity is one of the most extensive of any group in the world. Be sure to let me know your thoughts on German Americans and German American history. Interesting, man. What the heck, bro? I did not know any of this. I did not know any of this. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. A lot of this I did not know about at all. I learned something new. Um, I guess if you really think about it, there were a lot of countries that wound up migrating to America and stuff over time. I just thought that it happened mainly like between like the mid to late 1800s through the 1900s and stuff, you know, I didn't realize it happened as early as the 1600s and things of that nature. And then like, you know, how the colonies worked and functioned and stuff and their influence throughout um, a lot of huge American staples and stuff like that. That's to me, that's massive. Like what the fuck? Like, anyways, you guys know, let me know what you think in the comments down below. It's been an honor and a privilege as usual to check out this video with you guys. I will see you in the future. And uh, that's pretty much it. Take care. Love you guys. Ciao, 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 ciao. Well, 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 what a pleasure it is to see all of your beautiful faces at the end of this lovely video. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'm sure you know, as I've mentioned in the past, we do have a Discord that's linked in the description down below, and we would love to have you a part of the world's greatest community ever. Bray Gang. 
Yes, if you've made it to this point in the video, you're officially a part of the community. So go ahead, join the Discord server. Link is in the description down below. And we also have other social media as well, like Instagram, Twitter, we're live, we, we go live on Twitch quite, quite often as well. So I, it would behoove you to, you know, go ahead and subscribe to the Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash James Bragang. Join the cause and be a part of the greatest, literally the greatest community ever. Okay, it's simple. Just go ahead and do those little things. We're trying to grow on all these little platforms and everything, and it really means a lot. Now, I know you guys stumbled up across the channel, and you're like, what does this guy post? Like, what kind of content does he post? Reactions, vlogs, pretty much whatever comes to my mind, all right? It's random content. I don't know what I'm gonna be posting 10 years from now, but I do know that you can stick along for the journey, and it really means a lot. Now, for every single person that subscribes and follows, all of the accounts that I have made, and the, all the links will be in the description down below, that's an automatic entry for any future giveaways I decide to have. I'll remind you when the giveaways take place, but you'll be surprised what I will be giving away because you guys have supported me so much up to this point, and it's only right that I do the same thing back. Thank you guys so much for being amazing, and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Peace.